Well, I just think, you know, it's it's been an emotional ride. You know, um, truth be told, 19 years is a long time with a club associate. You know, you think long and hard, and now I'm, you know, I'm reflecting, it's still, you know, a bit raw, and, you know, I pinch myself, have I made the right decision, haven't I? Um, but I know, you know, I left in 2015, uh, 16 to go to Arba. That was a choice for Wayne Jones to leave, and a selfish choice, because I wanted to develop my career elsewhere and learn new things. But I made this choice purely that it's for Half West to develop and kick on where they deserve to be. And my 19 years association, I feel I owe them that. You know, I think I've done well out of the club in that time. I think the club's done well out of me. And there comes a point in anyone's life that you know, if you've got to move on for different reasons, you've got to be big, broad enough, don't blag it out. And one thing I want you to was, you know, whenever I return, which I will, to support the club and cheer the lads on, I want to walk through the Bridge Meadow being proud of what I've done. But yeah, you know, I wish them well and I'll be the biggest supporter. Good luck. We are live on your smart speakers and on the Pure West Radio Facebook page. Our top story tonight will be reaction to the news that Haverford West County manager Wayne Jones stepped down from his position over the weekend. We'll get Gordon and Fraser's thoughts, a tribute to a Bluebirds legend, and we'll get reaction from the chairman, Rob Edwards, live on the show in the next 20 minutes to give us the latest. On December the 5th, 2021, manager... Wayne Wolvesy Jones shocked the Bluebirds community by handing in his resignation as first team manager, ending a 19 year association with the club. It's a sad time. He's, he's, I've said to him and everyone that I've spoken to since he, he's honestly the most genuine person I've ever met. Um, there's never anything left to the imagination, even if you would rather it stay there. Um, it was, it was always, um, he always said what he thought. And I think you, the, the way the decision was made, I think a lot of the conversation I'd, I'd keep between us. And if he wants to explain his decisions in more detail than he should, I don't think it's right for me to do that. But all the conversations were about what's best for Harvard West. So the guy was a, was a class act to the, the very end. And look, just on and off the pitch, he's just a massive personality, big part of the club as player, coach, manager. You know, after the 4-1 defeat to Flint, travelling back on the team coach, you know, I isolated myself, reflected as much as I could. And truth be told, I felt if the club wanted to go away, I felt they deserved. Um, I felt Rob deserved the chairman. Um, I felt it was maybe the time for a new voice. And I didn't take it lightly, you know. The, the result that scarred me or wounded me, I should say, really bad was the Carnarvon 2 on home. But then the performance, you know, against Flint 4-1 defeat, I was scratching my head thinking where the next result was coming from, knowing we play Bala next week, Connors Key after, before the transfer window comes. And, you know, if I was being honest to myself, I felt maybe my voice was falling on um, deaf ears with some players. I could see that in the change room, whether one or two maybe I had lost them, truth be told. Taking everything into account, you know, on the back of a depleted squad, I, you know, I understand that. Um, but it was a really tough decision and I felt the club deserves to be, you know, pushing for top six where at the moment, you know, we're scratching the bottom of the barrel. I've said it openly, I came publicly to the media that we're in a relegation battle because it gives someone a chance to come in, you know, assess the current squad. We knew, you know, I haven't spoken to the chairman about potential targets in January. Um, and again, it's a bad window. You know, I knew that players on contract with other clubs, you know, tied up there. We're fighting relegation. The appeal maybe to come to half a West at the time wasn't great. And I tried to, you know, put everything into picture. And 
I felt maybe someone coming in with maybe new contacts, new ideas, refresh, regalvanize the squad that's currently there. It would put the club in, in the best position possible that it could. You know, we've had injuries, which hasn't helped the case, no different to every other club, but, you know, in reflection, looking back, I, I stick by it. It was the, the best choice, not for Wayne Jones, um, but certainly for Half West County, that they have a new man at the helm. My most difficult day yesterday since I took over, um, just obviously emotions running high, what comes next, the, the kind of realisation that you always expect this is going to happen because it is football that you're going to replace mm. a manager, but you, you kind of don't really prepare yourself for that day. I know as dramatic as it sounds, but um, yeah, it was all, all hands to pump yesterday to obviously look, thank, thank Wayne and, and leave on the best terms possible. And he's done that and it, it'll always be, uh, for me, I'd, I'd class him as a, as a good friend now as well. So take, take the professional side out of it. He's just a friend to all in the club and everyone's extremely grateful. And like, we had a Saturday night and Sunday morning were pretty tough and we've all sort of come to terms with it as a coaching team and, and players and we just got to move on now. But as as Wolvesy said in his last interview, um, we're in a relegation battle, and we can't we can't hide from that. Um, the, the table doesn't lie after 15 games, and although we're probably slightly better than we've played slightly better than probably where the table suggests, it's where we are. He was a good player. He wasn't given enough credit as a, a left back, Wolvesy. He, he was a tenacious left back, and he played in uh, the only half West team in 2003-2004 to finish in the top three, I believe, of the Welsh League then. And uh, they played in Europe, where they played a team uh, from Iceland at Ninian Park and then out in Iceland. But it, he's a great competitor, uh, and he will be sorely missed around this club. You know, the phone isn't as busy now. You know, the day-to-day -day contact with your coaching staff, Fwagi, James Devnell, Sean Pemberton, Mickey Ellis. You know, the, the list continues. Tristan, Ben, the physios, the doctor, Richard. You know, you're having a lot of dialogue day-to-day -day with these. You know, whether it be emails, WhatsApp messages, phone calls, FaceTime, Zooms, we've done it all, you know, and that I miss. You know, um, most probably getting on my missus's nerves at the moment and, <laughs> and that because I'm home a lot more, but... You know, that, that you miss, I think that's natural because once you've done it day to day for so long, you know, and you're suddenly taken away from you, it's a big gap. When you're a fan or when you're not so close to a, to a, um, to a club, it hurts when you, you lose. But within yeah. an hour or so, you're, you're home, your feet up and watching Strictly. But when, you're, <laughs> when, it's, when it's down to you as to what happens next, whether it be as me as a chairman, manager, coaching team, it hurts. And I, I know how much he cared, how much the coaches care. They know how much I care. Exactly. I'm unconsolable for two days when we get beat and I'm on cloud nine for two days when we win. Mm. I go back to the first promotion in 2014-15 on that last game to Aberdeen away when we got to win by five clear goals and we do so. That was most probably, you know, I played in Europe for Alpha West in 2004. That was my all-time personal greatest footballing achievement as a player. But certain performances, you know, I go back to last year when we beat Bala. This year we beat TNS at home. Great memories against top sides. Things that will live with me forever. You know, it's a great club. Outstanding and, you know, good memories. Good memories. Obviously, the first thing you would normally do when a manager leaves is look to the assistant. Um, obviously, Gary Richards is head of coaching at the academy. There's a huge job to be done there at the moment. He's assistant manager as well. So that's, that's enough, I think that's enough on his plate. Um, you look at uh, senior coaches like James Devonald, Mickey Ellis. These have got their hands full, um, been loyal servants to Wolves, isn't it? and will continue to be great, great assets to the coaching team. But we, we kind of looked at senior players um, and, and a, a new coach who had obviously captain last season in Sean Pemberton. Uh, so he, alongside Jazz Richards, will, will take the team on Saturday. They're training as we speak. I want to be sensitive, particularly with, with Pemberton, because obviously very close to Wayne and you don't want to... Mm -hmm. You don't want to see it kind of jumping in someone's grave the minute, minute that they leave. Yeah. And there was probably that element to it in terms of a loyalty to him. Mm. So I had to be very careful of that. And I was honest that look, if, if you don't want to, then don't do it. But credit to Sean, he, um, he stepped up and, and alongside Jazz. I think we had great conversations last night and they seem really up for it and to try and get the, the best out of them in the short time that they're going to be they're going to be involved. You know, Rob Edwards has acted in the manner that he can. He's gone for someone in the club like Pems, who's tried and trusted. Uh, again, you know, I've always been teased here about Pems being my uh, adopted son.
But he sums up Hanford West County to me. He fights, he battles, how he wins a ball in the air, because he's the biggest guy in the world. How he does that, I'll never know. But he is Hanford West County through and through. He came here, don't forget, as someone who played a couple of games for Newcastle Emlyn and Carmarthenshire League. But he has been a, a pillar in this club. And I know, I'm hoping the players will say we'll play for Pems like they used to for, for Wolvesley as well. A jazz has had experience in Welsh International, played in the 2016 European competition. So he's been around. I'm hoping he can use that experience to give the the players the sort of tactics they need with um, Gary Richards and I hope the Pems can do the firing up that some of them need. I've worked with Wilsey for the last 10 years on and off and uh, he's a close mate and it's just got in and heartbreaking to see him go. I thought they trained well, best, best have trained in quite a while, you know, there's a few boys who slacked off over the weeks and we just said there's a new, new management in charge, it's fresh start for boys who ain't getting much game time. <laughs> A tough run of fixtures over the coming weeks ensured the new management team weren't going to have it easy. It's man up being puckers the glass and the ankle chenivo. Single to keep another neon and hoodie bala. Oli Shannon Dean on and all. Oh, the Arachinek and Jazz Richards. Sean Pemberton and Jazz Richards. It did key drill with Drostro and Man Hulford. And Richards, though, the rat doing that. And Lady Luck was certainly not on the Bluebird side. Danny Williams, Hulford, and Puisa, Adam Miller Court, Kieran Lewis, the Cali Dunnish Tower, and Kieran Smith, and Dim and Gikor Smotsin. But they went out well, then went to Gasly Board, and Savlek Wesley, well done. It has been a tough week, um, obviously, with Wolves stepping down, which come to a surprise to a lot of us. Um, you know, we've got the utmost respect for Wolves, and for whatever reason, he stepped down. We'll all stay in touch with him still, he's a great guy. But obviously me and Pems have had to step in with Waggy and the other staff as well. And I think the boys done fantastic today. We asked them simple instructions in a week to implement into the game, which everyone could see today that they've done. And in the end, it's a, it's a good result, but we probably could have nicked it as well. So, you know, that's the positive that we were looking for from the boys, the right reaction, and they give it to us today. When questioned whether they were considering an application for the full-time role, both Jazz and Pems were very honest in their response to the potential opportunity. No, no one bet. <laughs> I don't know how people do it. <laughs> no, not right now. Um, you know, I, I don't mind up and out at all. I'll give all the experience I got to help the lads, help the, the coaching staff for as long as it, it's going to take. But hopefully we can find a sustained um, manager. Off-field challenges were soon multiplied for the club as another Covid break initiated by the Welsh Government meant that several fixtures were to be delayed. Covid break was unfortunate, um, I think we're looking forward to big derby games over the Christmas period but, but we, have to be, we have to be careful in the times we're in and to, from our benefit it gives us the opportunity to, to make that decision, it gives us that time to, uh, to go through the process in as much detail as possible and yeah we've had some genuinely surprised by the amount of applications that we had, um, we probably had 45 to 50 applications. Um, a lot from abroad, which again shows a bit of a draw for the club. Um, a lot, a few locals, a few, uh, few guys who have been around the circuit for a while. Um, but for me it was about finding someone that has the vision or shares the vision of the club to take it forward. We don't just want someone to come in and take control of the side, kind of not buy into the overall picture. So we kind of torn between the interim process or, or, or holding out until we find the right person. Covid break gave us the opportunity to, to find the right person and there was one or two standout candidates, one, one exceptional in particular and yeah, hopefully um, we, can, we can find someone that ticks all the boxes. Early on in the interview process, whilst holding conversations with several candidates, one particular CV began to stand out well above the rest. Initial conversations with a former Belgian Pro League player revealed a UEFA Pro licence holder who had recent experience coaching against some of the world's top players. It provided a jaw-dropping moment for those responsible in choosing the next Haverford West County manager. With a track record of getting the best out of his players to overcome table-topping teams such as Genk in the Belgian Pro League, Waslan Beveren manager Nicky Hyen was introduced to the club and it was during conversations that details emerged that he had recently taken his team across the border to go head-to-head -head with Thomas Tuchel and the global superstars at PSG. He was outstanding from start to finish. Um, he was a standout. As I said previously, there was a lot of applications. 
it was a case of finding not just the right experience, te technical ability, but also finding the right person. I think we're a young team. We've got ambitions to, to go to a certain level, so I think we need someone who, who can come in and get the best out of younger players and also um, give what the professional players need and, and, and move, that, um, move the standards up. And, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted we managed to find someone of, of Nicky's calibre and uh, there's no, no shame in saying that he's, he's going to be, on paper, he's the, the, the best manager in the league. Um, and hopefully he'll, he'll bring everything that he showed you in the interview process to the team and, and he can really, um, firstly, get us out of trouble but take us forward, not just from, to the end of the season, but over the next year or two. Um, hence why we've, we've looked at a long-term deal with him. Um, and yeah, he's got our full back in and delighted to have him. And having experienced a few weeks in the hot seat himself, there was another Bluebirds legend that was ending his journey with Haverford West County. It's been a tough one since obviously Wolfie stepped down, and uh, it's been hard to adapt to the coaching role from the playing role. And to be honest, I think I missed playing more than what I would have expected. Uh, not to this level, I know I can't play in the Welsh Prem uh, week in, week out um, due to my age and the legs going, but uh, obviously I've had to step down and Sean Cress has given me an opportunity to become a player at my hometown club in Kamara. Having played in almost every position on the field during his decade with the club, the departing co-manager Pems felt the club was in good hands going forward. Background pedigree he's bringing into the club. Uh, I think he's the right fit for where the club to see themselves in the next couple of years. And I think he can take him, go, uh, take him forward going on. Um, I haven't met him personally yet, but I'm looking forward to meeting him in the future. I'll be trying to get down to as many games as I can because it's been a big part of my life for the last 10 years. And uh, I'm a Bluebirds fan now. Uh, so Waggy, uh, Gary Richards will step up and, and, and manage the team during that period. Obviously, Nick is uh, watching from afar. He's, he's desperate to get going. Obviously, since Brexit, uh, work permit situation is difficult. Um, so that's something that I've never had to, uh, to go through. The club has never had to go through. But it's a process we're clear on in terms of what we need to do. It's just a case of, uh, of timing. We're, we're rushing through things as quickly as we can to make sure we can, we can get him in the dugout as soon as possible. But yeah, it's one of the challenges when you look at managers. Like I said, there are easy options within the UK. But Nicky ticked every box and we didn't want to settle for somebody that wasn't exactly what we were looking for. So we were willing to go through that process for him. And fingers crossed it's a matter of weeks and not months and we can get him where he wants to be with the boys on the grass and in the dugout and getting results for us. With the club still deeply involved in a relegation battle, several new recruits boosted both the playing and coaching staff and brought a sense of optimism within the group but would even more off-field departures be on the horizon for the club. It's not that I want to leave at all, but if I get the chance to go higher, I will take that. Have it all if you like